So in order to understand this concept, uh, first we have to understand the difference between AC and DC current. So AC stands for alternating current and DC stands for direct current. And what's the difference between them? So DC is the type of current that you get out of a battery. Okay? Uh, it is in one direction. It's constant in one direction. And so if, if I have a wire here, essentially current travels in, in, in only one direction. And if I also have a graph of the voltage versus time, in DC the voltage is a constant value. In other words, it doesn't change. On the other hand, with alternating current, this is the current that comes out of our sockets, right? Our wall sockets. This is what is used for distributing power. And we'll actually take a look at why that is. Uh, it's varying. It changes direction. So in terms of uh, a wire, we can just draw the wire here. It's not in one direction, but it's in both directions. It keeps changing directions. Now that has a frequency in North America, the rate at which it changes directions, or yeah, is 60 hertz, or 60 times per second the direction changes. Now, if I was to draw this as a voltage versus time graph, it actually looks like a sine curve. And you can see that the voltage is changing it's positive in one direction, and then a short time later, it's in the negative direction. So this is positive, and this is neck. Oops, let me change that. And this is negative. So over here, it's all positive. Now, there is a reason why the world uses alternating current to distribute power. So let's, first of all, let's, let's create a factory here. And this is a power plant. And over here, let's have a city. Now in order to provide the city with power, we have to have transmission lines. And those transmission lines go from the power plant to the city. And these, power, these transmission lines are in fact made of copper wire, a conductor. But even still, even though they are still a conductor, uh, these transmission lines still have some resistance. Now, that means that we have power lost in actually transferring the electrical power from the power plant to the city. And that power lost is equal to I squared R. <coughs> it is the square of the current in the transmission lines multiplied by the resistance. So, if the entire power that is transmitted if the power transmitted is equal to IV, which is current times voltage, then in order to keep the power constant, if we, obviously, if we want to reduce the power loss, we can't change the resistance of the lines, but we can reduce the current in the lines. But if we reduce the current, then in order to keep the power the same, we must increase the voltage because the product of I times V needs to remain the same or constant. So, therefore, 
the way that transmission lines can reduce power loss is by increasing the voltage. That means here at the power plant, we increase the voltage. And here at the city, obviously we don't want, want high voltage. We don't want like the 10,000 volts going into your house. That would be dangerous. So we have to decrease the voltage. Now, here's where the advantage of AC comes in. Alternating current is what transformers use to transformers use to step up or step down voltage. Transformers will not work with DC. Now if you're wondering like what a transformer is, it's kind of beyond the scope of this course in particular, but I can draw a simple transformer in that uh, actually, let me draw that again. You can have an iron core with windings on it and on the other side you can have more of them. In essence, what happens here is this is this is like the basic concept of a transformer a transformer only works with AC now I'm not going to get into the discussion of how this transformer works it works on uh, magnetic inductance uh, but essentially when this wire the only way it's going to work is with AC if you if you have a direct current going into this side it's not going to generate uh, an electric current on the other side. The only way it works is with DC on one side, oh, sorry, AC alternating current on one side and alternating current on the other side. The number of loops on either side determines whether or not it's a step up or a step down. We'll leave that for a different course. But just to say that you cannot create a transformer using DC current. Therefore, in order to decrease the, trend, the loss of power in a transmission li line, we, are, we, we have to use alternating current because we can step up the voltage here and step down the voltage here. And that's what allows efficient use of power transmission. Just to, just to be, clarify, think about what happens if we double the voltage. If you double the voltage, then you have the current. And if you have the current, what's the power loss? Well, it's I squared R, but now it's one half I squared R, which is essentially one quarter I squared R. So if you double the voltage, you only lose a quarter of the power in the transmission okay ideally so you can see how it's very beneficial to increase the voltage there are other disadvantages of increasing the voltage like when you have uh, transmission towers you um, you have to keep the the cables further apart and away from everything else because high voltage can arc, uh, ionize the air and uh, spark and create a short circuit. That's dangerous. So, but I would say the whole world uses AC for power transmission. Only recently in the world has uh, some other new technologies been invented to uh, allow different methods. But this is the um, main way that power is transmitted throughout the planet.